My name is K. V. Ratnam. Actually, I have a long name. It's called Kuchipudi Venkat Ratnam. But you know, most American people have a hard time uh, uh, pronouncing that long name. Polish names are always long names. But uh, usually we cut, 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 came to K. V. Ratnam. But that's not enough. Everybody knows me as K. V. So because still some more cut. Well, I am from southern part of India called Nusweed. Many, like how I became an Adventist is, uh, we are from the Church of South India. That time it's called CSI, it came from England. And, uh, but Adventists have a hospital there, it's the first hospital in, in, in India. It's called, it's in a Nusweed, town called Nusweed. And a uh, lot of uh, Adventist missionaries comes there, plus also local people. And during the Sabbath, they'll go conduct brand Sabbath schools. There are about three places they conduct brand sub school. We are about a couple of miles away from the hospital. And my father is a mason. My mother didn't study. She's a housewife. Anyway, I was studying in a public school. And every Sabbath, when I see them walking and pass by my village, and they're going to conduct a brand sub schools. So I used to skip school because we go to school on Saturday also. About four o'clock, three, four o'clock, I some slowly move, run away from the school and come and join these guys. And they're not too far from, from where our school is. And so I gave sit down in the French row and I was a small boy. And then I learned the songs and the memory verses. I could recite all 30 memory verses at one time. And uh, well, there was a missionary, Miss Stoneburner, Ella Miss Stoneburner, now she passed away. She used to come to that Sabbath, that branch Sabbath school, and she was always observing me, observing me. One day, she said, can I come and talk to your father? I said, okay. So she come with me, and I, there was a translator. We took her to my father. She asked me, you know what? And I want to send your son to a boarding school. And uh, would you like to send him? And I will take care of all his expenses. My father said, how far is it? He says, 100 miles from here. He says, no, he can't go. I don't want him to go that far. Because I was one of his petted child, you know. So, but it went on for a whole year. She was coming occasionally, tell my father. He says, no, tell my father, he says, no. Finally, one day he asked me, do you like to go? And I said, yeah, I have no idea what it is, where it is, and all this, and all I know is going to school. So one day, finally, my father took me to her office, and she already, he already bought new clothes and a trunk. So, I mean, she already had a trunk and she made already new clothes and sheets and everything else already there. So I went there, she said, this is your box. And there is a bus that came to the school and there were other students that uh, joined there and uh, everybody else joined there. So we all traveled about uh, uh, 25 miles in the bus, on a bus. Then the train comes in. You know, the train is coming from another village and passing by. So we got into the train. Then I met more new people, new people and all that. So we went to this place called Narsapur School. And remember, I have no idea where the, I mean, what they do and the food and everything else. So anyway, makes more friends and friends and friends there. So that's when the following year I met, uh, you know, uh, Samati. Uh, and while we were there, that I was not an Adventist. Then we learned to mo learn more about Adventists and all that. Then that's where I was baptized in that Adventist school. But I was the only one from my house who was baptized. And back at home, whenever I come there, uh, the meat is not a problem, you know, the pork is not a problem because we, it, you know, we used to eat everything else. But when I came there to the Adventist school, then I learned that you can't eat this, you can't eat this, you can't this, you know, unclean foods. When I came home, that Christmas time, you know, the villagers, they cut a pig and everybody takes a portion of it and they try to cook at my home. And I said, I've told my father, you can't eat this. And then uh, I told my brothers also, you can't eat this. Then they tell, well, I got to explain this unclean and all that. It didn't go too far, you know, but I never ate in the house. And uh, then afterwards, so then I went back to school. Then my brother, youngest brother, he wanted to go to school. I told my father. My father said, no, let him study here. And he said, you know, I pressured him and I said, he has to come to school. So I took him to school also the following year, couple of years after that, then he became an Adventist. Then few years after that, I convinced my older brother 
to see if we would become an Adventist. Because we have, by then we have a hospital and the Adventist influence is more and more because I was coming and going so they knew who are the Adventists are. My brother became an Adventist, older brother. But later on my mother became an Adventist. My father wouldn't. So after many years, then uh, my brother had a son, only one son. Then, uh, but then what happened is uh, then uh, he was going to school locally. Then my father finally, before he died, he became an Adventist. So our whole family became Adventist because of uh, the the because of the Brand Sab School, and the, because of the Adventists from the hospital came into our village, and that's where because of their hardships and plus God's providence have to be there. You know that because of that, then I became an Adventist. My whole family became an Adventist. That first group. Then I sent my. Then when we got married, then I sent, uh, uh, when we started working, I paid for my, but my brother's son to go to Adventist school, the same school where we went. Then he finished that school and he went to Spicer College. Then we helped him also in Spicer College. And after Spicer College, he met a, a Adventist girl there. By then he's also baptized when he was in high school. Then he met an Adventist girl there, they both got married. Now he is the, uh, the both came to work for the mission for the last 15, 16 years they're working. They have two children, three children. The both are in Adventist school and uh, one boy became uh, the, the, he has a master's in uh, computer science working for Adventists. And to have two girls, the both are in Adventist school doing the nursing. My nephew is the vice president of finance for the school and the hospital. It's a, it's a, God's providence that we are all able to be in the in the, in the church, and the second generation of them, and they're all Adventists, you know. So that is my how I became an Adventist. But then, after that, we came to work. We, we both, my wife and I, did nursing. First, I went to Spicer College. I want to. I was always into fine arts, fine arts, fine arts. So when we went to Spicer College. That's about quite a fair, these two, three states we have to travel and go. We've never been that far away from home. When we are going to school, but finally, uh, you know, once I finished high school, there's only Adventist college. People from all states come there. Now we have quite a lot of schools, but that time with all schools, they come there for college education. I know I'm going to the study fine arts and we don't have any bulletins. So we really don't know what we're going to study until we go there. When I went there, I was looking for the fine arts. They never have that word fine arts, fine arts. So the closest I could come there is uh, uh, industrial arts because it has uh, uh, mechanical drawings and all that. So I took that. I did it. I was very fast among all the students because I have art background. Then I, while I was there, I was applied for the nursing also. Not that I would go, but I, you know, you had to fill the papers to see. If they have an opening, they'll give me. So then after that, they asked me, what we do is during the summertime, we go to uh, uh, selling the books, coal potter work, to make some money for the school. So I went to the coal potters, you know. you know. So when I was in the field, uh, apparently they accepted me for nursing, which, but they, we had no of contacting me because we don't have phones, we had no cell phones, nothing of that sort. So we are in the field somewhere and they, they couldn't contact me. So after finishing that, uh, then I came home, then I was ready to go back to Spicer because first year is finished, second year I'm going, they have an admission already. Then I was hospital campus, I was walking around. Then the nursing director caught me and said, you know, come to my office. She took me to my office, office and said, you know, we've been trying to contact you. There is no way said, what seems to be the problem. He says, we took you for nursing. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the last week. And I want you to see, give me five, five rupees. As a, you, know, you know, I will keep your seat. You go home and find out, I mean, you figure out what you want to do. You come back and see me if you want it or not. So she's going to reserve the seat. So I gave five rupees. Then I came home and came back. That changed my whole life. Of course, by then she's already there. Then I took the nursing. So when we were in nursing, with the three years of nursing, after nursing, the, nursing, the medical director called and said, you know, we have a job in Nepal. They wanted a husband and wife. And I hear you are interested in uh, 
Sumati and uh, that will bore you well, you get married and go. And I said, hey, I don't have money to marry. No, this is too fast, you know, because they want it right now. And, uh, but we don't know any Nepal. I have, we don't even know more than uh, Spicer College and uh, our home, you know. We, we were not uh, traveling like this. We have no TVs and uh, we have no maps and we don't know anything about uh, We don't have Google's vehicles and all that, you know. We have no idea where Nepal is. And uh, so, and he says, uh, they want you immediately. You, know, you have to get married and go. Then finally, we got married. And he said, I don't have money. He said, why do you need money? When I got married, he's from United States. When I got married, I rented clothes, which is true. Here you rent them. There we can't rent them anywhere. We got tailored. He says, okay, I'll give you a loan. You take that loan and you get married and go. So he gave me 500 rupees to loan. Then finally, we got married. Then we stayed for a week in there. Then our first honeymoon is in Nepal. We have no idea where to. So I asked him, how do I go to Nepal? He said, okay, I will send you, a, you know, you buy the ticket in a, a railway ticket and it will take you to Calcutta. Now it's called Kolkata or something like this. Then uh, Pastor uh, uh, Parker is there. He will help you from there. So we got into the train. We started traveling all night. The next day we'll be there. Remember, once we, we are uh, from Andhra Pradesh, down south, it is the western part of uh, 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 India is uh, Nepal. I mean, not Nepal, it's uh, Calcutta. So we traveled all night. Once we left India, we lost everything else. We don't, language is different, Hindi. Food is different, we are rice eaters. Now we are going to eat bread and then the, 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 then the, the, the curries are different, everything else. We are basically starving. We have a little bit of money, we are starving because we can't eat their food. We look at it and say, no, no, I can't eat this, I can't eat this. But anyway, we ended up in Calcutta. We took a taxi, went to the, the doctor, our mission station there. And uh, Pastor Parker from United States, he is the pastor of the, that uh, uh, set up there. So we went and uh, knocked the door and said, we are so and so, and we are on the way to Nepal, please, uh, and we want to stay here for the, tonight. And he said, okay, it's a Friday evening. Send the Spavath with us, and uh, Saturday night, I'll put you in the train back again. He said, okay, we stayed with them, they gave us lunch. So we ate, in the, we stayed in the guest room. Then the Saturday night, he said, okay, let's go. He bought a ticket, because we don't know after that what is where, if the mission is paying anyway. But then he put us in the train to Patna. And he also bought us the air tickets. So we got into the Patna. When we got into the Patna, you know, then that is where the problem started. Again, the same thing, it's in the northern part of India. So we don't know the language. So we went there, so we got down in Patna, took a taxi and went to the uh, airport. Waited, waited, waited. Finally, our turn came, so we ended up in Nepal. He told me, Pastor Parker, I'm sending a telegram. Somebody will come and pick you up in, in, in Nepal. Kathmandu, we got down in Kathmandu, all we are looking, look, look all around to see who is coming after us. Their cars are coming, going, airport, you know. So many cars are coming, going. We thought maybe there is a van with the seventh ray Adventist. Couldn't find, couldn't find, couldn't find. By then, we lost. Completely, language is different. Writing is all in Nepal. And uh, so we were hungry. Because all this is from whole Andhra, we traveled and we are uh, very hungry. We don't know what to do. So I tried to use a little, little bit of Hindi that we know. It didn't go too far. We don't know anything in Nepali. I, I tried to go to different people and say, hey, look, how do I go to Banipa? And they say, Ta China. Ta China means I don't know. They left. They left, left. left. By then, whole afternoon we were there, just trying to find out how we can go to Nepal. I mean, how you can go to Kathmandu? I mean, Banipa from Kathmandu. So finally, there is one guy, he's an Indian guy. He is a taxi driver. So I try to talk to him a little bit of Hindi because he doesn't speak, we are speak Telugu. And so one or two words of Hindi says, Banipa, we had to go, you want to come along? You want to take us? He says, I know where it is, come on. So we sat in that car, we, he took us, uh, over the mountains and down up in the valley, mountains, down up in the valley, all around, we thought he's going to take us for a ride. 
We are scared. We don't know. But we can't talk to him because we don't know the language. So now if we ask him where it is, where it is, what all this, you can. I mean, you can't talk to him because we don't know the language. So finally, he took us to that valley of Nepal, Banyapa. And he says, this is Banyapa. He said, take me to the hospital. So he took me to that hospital. It's actually a small dispensary. So somebody came from there and I said, Shir Memorial Hospital? That we know. Then he said, not here. Then where is it? He said, up on the mountain. Then he again, because that same taxi guy, we got down. Then he took us to the hospital, I mean, the, the, where the mountain is, you know. And so I told her to stop there in a, the taxi, told my wife to stay there. I went inside and I met a, a lab technician. I knew him from, you know, uh, back in South. He, he was when he was a student there. Then I knew this is the hospital. So I went and talked to, knocked the door. They were having lunch. Clarks and uh, Sturgis. Sturgis, actually, younger brother, he's there. Clarks came to replace him. So I came back, they all came to the door and they said, uh, can I help you? I said, my name is so-and-so and my wife and I came to work here. Then he said, we know you are coming, but we don't even know when, where you are coming. And I said, we sent Dr. Uh, uh, Parker sent you a telegram. We're hoping you'll come and meet me. Oh, forget about the telegram. Because we have no phones there. Forget about telegram. Because tell everybody from, I mean, these uh, the doctors will only go to Kathmandu every Wednesday. We were there Monday. So until Wednesday, the telegram will go into the post box. So on Wednesday, they went there, found the telegram. So that is how we started our life. The second day, for the very first day, the next day, we have to go to work don't know the language. And we don't have any, see when the missionaries comes there, they learn the language school. And the clerks, when, when they came, they have two lorry loads of things that they came, because they're going to stay five years you know, or more. They brought even soaps, so washers, dryers, and everything else. They prepared and came. For us, nothing. A small, you know, two, three pairs of clothes. We don't have a knife to cut. When we are cutting the first vegetables, we are using, uh, razor blades. Not this razor blades, we don't have those uh, regular razor blades because we don't have uh, uh, things to use, you know. And then they use uh, uh, mustard oil. Oh, terrible mustard oil, we, the smell of that will kill you. And we are coming from peanut oil, you know, back in the south, you know, we are used to that kind of one. And it was a, a very, very hard for us to uh, get used to that. They gave us a a small uh, guest house and we stayed in the guest house there. But in that country we can't preach. You know, we cannot talk anything about religion. And uh, we don't have a church. So only four, four nurses and uh, uh, they are from India. And some of our classmates, her, one of, two of our classmates were there. And uh, of course I'm the only male nurse there. So we go to Saturday, we go to the doctor's house next door to us. That's where we had a Sabbath school, church service and all that. We cannot speak any, any religion outside. If we do, they will close down the hospital in, immediately and they pack all of us because we are foreigners. We are missionaries from India and they are missionaries from United States. They'll pack us up and send us out of the country in seven days. That is the contract we have with the government. So we couldn't talk, we didn't say anything about it. But uh, uh, that didn't stop Malcolm, Calvin and Malcolm, it did not stop them. Though they got friendly with the small children there and somehow they bring them on Sabbath and then they will talk them about uh, health and you know, of course we also talk about religion and all that, but health and everything else. And then uh, local people came to know that we are talking to them on religion. The local headman came to know people went and complained to him. These are they all know about the contract than we do. They said, "Hey, look here, they are teaching the children religion." So one day the headman talked to one of our people and he says, "Hey, look here, what seems to be the problem? You are not supposed to be talking." And our people said, "Hey, we are telling them the health stories." Then he said, "Okay, I will come and see," and he came and sat down there. By then we changed our uh, 
<laughs> you know, see, we talked about health, cleanliness, and this and that, and all that. And he said, hey, look here, I, next week, converse, I'll sell my grandchildren also. Now, after a while, then our children, people are interested in, and uh, slowly, uh, uh, some parents want to send our children to our schools, and they went to Northeast. We have boarding school there, and now many of them are Adventists there, and we have a, uh, the, the whole hospital is a teaching hospital now. And then one year we stayed there. So after staying there, uh, uh, she was able to pick up the language much faster than I am. I don't know much about language. I'm very slow in language, you know. But she was able to translate to Dr. Clark. And he was then, by then he was the only doctor. And we used to take, I mean, patients, 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 at least sometimes 80, 90 patients come in. Day and night, we have night time, we sleep, there, we don't know when they will wake us up. When a patient comes up to the door, they knock the door, and we, we don't have any phones. We open the window and call and Dr. Clark or Dr. Ray, this, or send an aide to call them. And so we were busy day and night, day and night. And one day she was walking around and Dr. limping, Dr. Clark saw her. She said, Kusumati, why are you limping up? He says, I don't know, I, I have some problem with my foot. And she found out that uh, he found out that she had, a, you know, you know what it was, frostbite. We are coming from South Lake California, and we are coming to Michigan, you know, like they. She, we don't know what frostbite is. She's wearing with the slippers, not in the shoes and all that. We are not prepared for that. So he took care of her, and you know. So anyway, we came back to South, and then in the following year, mission work anyway, because they'll transfer you. So we went to a nurse school. There we, she was a student of, I mean, the, the, what do you call, uh, dean of students. And I was teaching art and health and all that. After a year there, uh, we were called to another bigger school. And they have about 750 students, uh, teachers training, ministerial training. After going there, and I was actually teaching, and she was the school nurse. Then while we are there, it, when we are in Nepal, Nepal connected to the Northern India Union. Pastor Christo was the president of that. Then he came to Youth Congress in that Lowry Memorial High School in, in South. And he looked at me. He said, you know, what are you doing here? I said, I work here. I said, who released you from Nepal? You are, I sent you to Nepal, you're supposed to be there, both of you, and who released you to Nepal? And I was looking for all around, for you, where you are, and I want you back in Nepal. By then, he was the, he was the union secretary. By then, we already had children, we, are, we thought uh, school is enough, we go back to the hospital. Then I said, okay, I'll come. And uh, when we went back to Nepal the second time, Dr. Yaki is the, he's the hospital uh, administrator, and he's the only doctor. Dr. Clark's already left. And then uh, uh, I had a, uh, we had a privilege to work with him, and he doesn't know much of English. Sometimes he would, uh, on Saturday, we take turns to sermon at Sabbath school. All of a sudden, in the middle of the Sabbath school, the nurses call and say, there's a dairy, they came, lady came, that del delivery. Or somebody delivered and pleasant and didn't come. What would you do? We have Sabbath school while doing the surgery. You know, when you're doing the surgery, then talk to each other. He said, okay, what happened here? What happened? To a sermon also in the surgery. Because the doctor speaks and whoever the sermon is aside, they will speak because we're only a handful of us, you know. And uh, uh, when sometimes, you know, when uh, he calls me, then by then I, they sent me to India to take three months of crash course in anesthesia, especially ether or spinal. spinal. So I do that. And then I, she assists him in the surgery. And I do the uh, anesthesia and he does the surgery. So three of us. And then sometimes he doesn't know much English. So what he does is sometimes when he has a problem doing, one day he was doing the surgery, laparotomy. One lady, uh, I mean laparotomy, she had, she came up with a, a tumor. When he was doing it, he could not go further. 
he doesn't know what to do. He has never done such. From school, he came back. So he told me to send somebody, get his books, surgical books from home. So I sent an aide, go and get a surgical book. So they brought the book, and he told me so open the. He told me to open the book. So I opened. He said page such and such, and we open, open, open. Then he has the how to do the surgery. So he cuts it and reads it. That's in Germany, German language. He'll read that, then go on to the next. He'll read that. Sometimes you know he get. Uh, we don't know what he's talking. He speaks speak in that language and open it and open it like that. We started at eight o'clock in the morning, and we did it till ten o'clock at night. Surgery. That's probably here. They do it in thirty minutes. So at ten o'clock. But the lady, I mean, she's a, this is actually the she delivered it the pleasant and did not come. She blood and blood and blood. So they have to remove the placenta from there. So it took that long. But she is losing. She doesn't have any blood. Then he so told me, "Can you? Uh, uh, why don't you call my wife? And ask her to come here." She, so she came here. And we all of us they cross matched our blood. She took blood samples from all of us to see what matches her blood. So many of us gave blood because we don't have blood banks. None of the men will give even her husband's families. They don't give blood. They think if you give blood, they will die. And we don't have uh, any what do you call donors. And it takes long for if you send a donor, he may have to go to so many villages to find somebody else. So what will he do? If he don't do it, he will die. So we gave blood, and it was one of the best things we ever did was uh, rescue her life, bring her back. Then she stayed one month in our hospital. Then everybody came to know about what all we did. Ever since he became one of the famous doctors there. And I was so surprised. I didn't think he was live, live, stay there longer, but he is one of those that stayed longest in Nepal. He adopted a boy from Nepal. His parents came to see him there, and he was in the mission service for a long, 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 long time. So while we are there, he, since he is the only doctor, he has a lot of difficult time taking care of all this. He has to take care of the outpatient. He had to do the surgeries. So no help. So what we did was he gave you know we took turns. On Monday and Wednesday he will run. A, we have a, a satellite clinic. It's about uh, uh, seven kilometers or something like this, and we had to go in a jeep, and it was not. It is a, a bumpy road and all that. I don't know much about the language. My wife would come and and I take a one business manager, and my wife. All three of us will go on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I am the doctor, and uh, because most people there, he die. I mean, affected with uh, TB, and uh, uh, what do you call uh, leprosy, and also most every one of them have worms, especially the round worms, and sometimes they come through the nose, come through the ears, and you know the stool, and they throw up worms. It kind of I'm sure most of uh, our people who worked there had worms because of you know, health problems. So we know there were seven pills we have to give, regardless. Of, and some of them had big stomachs, and because of the worms and all that. So, and uh, so I kind of know what uh, what is their problem and what to give. These three are the major ones. So when I go there, I had to get the confidence of the people. And he is the doctor. He is a MD. So he knew he won't even touch them when they're looking at it. It's okay, this guy has this problem and he's a TB and he's a, you know. So he knows what to do. He prescribes the medication. When I go there, then I got to think what I'm going to give to them. So what I do is I have stethoscope. When somebody says I'm having a pain here, I take the stethoscope and touch his stomach. You know, and when they say I have back pain, I Take the stethoscope, touch the back also. If they say headache, I take the stethoscope and touch the back. That means I am touching the people, and they think I know more about medicine than that medical doctor, because he is not touching them. 
He was also looking at them and saying, no, this, 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 okay, get, get, because he knew what to do. But for me, I got to get the confidence of the people. So I touch them and I feel them, you know, okay, you have pain here. I look at all these things. This stomach, okay, I touch this and says, okay. But I give them same pills, seven pills. By morning, everything is gone. So all the worms are gone. Then next week when they come, they don't want to be examined by him. They say, I want a Hindustani doctor. I'm, they call me Hindustani doctor. Then one day he asked me, KV, you know, those people don't want to be examined. They are disappointed when I go there, see him. They always want you. What are you doing that I don't know? I said, you used your stethoscope. I said, that's called degree. They call it a degree. Use your stethoscope, touch them. They like to have that, you know, they want to be touched because they think they knew, you know, the examine and the fever and all that, touch them. And we had a wonderful time there, you know. From there, by then our papers came. Then we came here, after we came in 72. When we came, the two children, grand, my mother-in-law, they came and we were working in the hospital, Memorial Hospital. We both are working for psychiatric nursing. And you know she went to OB because she has a, you know, uh, uh, you know she's more trained in that line. Then I went to the psych. And when we were in psych, that's one of the best fields I worked in because that not only help we helping the clients, you learn more about yourself. And when I'm working there, there's one young lady she used to come there all the time, you know, cutting, 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 cutting. Then we are. Uh, three or four advanced people working there. And then one of the nurses here, you know, took an interest in her, an older lady, took an interest in that young girl, she may maybe 18, 17, cutting and cutting. And so she took an interest in that, talking to her. You know, sometimes when she's discharged, she will make sure she's okay. She'll call her home. She came so many times, that girl came. She had a, it's from a dysfunctional family. Father is an alcoholic and they have no peace in the home. So what will you do? So all she could do is look for attention. She want to kill herself and all that. So this Mrs. Brown took an interest in her. So one day, then from our hospital, we transferred to another hospital. And uh, because there they have schooling and all that in Grand Rapids. After when she went there, she found another young fellow who was also a patient there. And then they both got friendly. By then she's feeling much better and because somebody cares, you know. And one day she called Mrs. Brown and said, Mrs. Brown, I met a young man here. Thank you for everything that you are doing for me. You know, I want to get married. I want you to be there at a wedding. It's going to be in Niles. Can you do me a favor? Would you ask KV to give me away? Because Adventist people, we want to be part of that Adventist circle, you know? She, she knows about Adventist people. Can you ask him to give me away? So we all went there to Niles. So wedding time, I was like a father. A father is sitting there in the front. She wouldn't ask him to do it because he's an alcoholic and uh, not much content, family feuds, you know. So we all went there. We had a wonderful wedding there. And then afterwards, when they had children, they sent a picture of that. So we, at least Adventist people, we were able to touch some of the people who were in you know, desperation there and all that. So while we are going through here, then my friend, Dr. Paraya, he says, let us take a group to India. So when we are taking a group to India, uh, uh, we talk to the uh, Dwight Nelson, Pastor Dwight Nelson here, and then Dr. S Pastor Skip, and there is uh, Dr. Bur Pastor Burns. Now he's in the, I mean, the union there. So there were three pastors here for a uh, year. He was a youth pastor. Then we gave them, why don't we do this? Then they got excited. Then they said, okay, let us uh, uh, raise some money. So we inform, inform the students, this is what we're going to do. There were a total of uh, 10, a total of 14 of us went there. And it was one of the biggest projects we ever uh, took over here. Each one raised $3,000. There's one girl from came from Canada. We, so we all got together. So we are going to spend 45 days in India. And it's the biggest time we ever, you know, it's not easy to go from here, spend it's a time of, it's in the, uh, summertime too, there. 
because summer time schools are closed, children are be there. So we all went there. We decided, you know, Dwight Nelson's son is 13, the youngest is 13. So each one has a job. Melky is taking care of the ministerial part of it. Then uh, uh, I was taking care of health and then make sure their clothes are washed and make sure their food is done and all that I was taking care of it. So then we all went there. And then I, we worked with a the doctor there. Then they brought 17 pastors to work with us. So we, the Bibles, it, there are th three or four language Bibles, we got it. Then we named it Mission Madras. We had a big backdrop, we made Second Coming of Jesus. So these kids uh, were uh, singing and you know, from here, telling stories, youth stories and all that. Finally, you know, we spent 45 days, there were 195 people were baptized. But that is the time my, my wife's uh, uh, uncle's daughter, she's a, a lawyer. She came to know I was there. So that evening she came, just we are having the meetings that night, she came and she told me, my, I know you are here and you told me you're coming. My father wants to see you, why don't you come home? I said, we are very busy here. Why don't you sit down here? Let us talk about it after the meetings. She sat down there. And after the meetings, he says, Baba, Baba means brother-in-law. You know, I really like this meeting and some of the things that I am looking, what I'm looking, they're also CSI people, you know. And uh, uh, they, I, I'm getting what I'm looking for, but I'll come back tomorrow. Then she came with two boys. Tomorrow, the next day, next day, then she invited her brother. And he also came with his family. Then what our doing is we have 17 pastors. Right after meetings, we have cards and the, the, we take their address and this pastor goes to their houses. Then give them Bible studies. And then uh, each one when they came in, they have Bibles, we give them the Bibles. Then the, after the meeting, they leave the Bible here. Last, they will take the Bible with them. So like that, they started uh, teaching her father also there. So it worked out really good because the whole family is there, you know, Bible. So then I'm mean, teaching the, you know, the Bible studies. Then the end of the Bible studies, then when we ask for baptism, they, he also want to be baptized. And then right after baptism, he was baptized. My father, you know, father and I, you know, more or less, he was baptized. My, the, the lawyer was baptized. These both boys, I mean, one boy was baptized. The other one is too small. And then her brother was baptized. Then what happened is, was then we said, look here, we have Adventist schools. We will pay for it. Why don't you send that boy who's graduate, I mean, who baptized to a boarding school? So we sent him to boarding school. We started paying for him. So he studied there. Now he's the boy, very, very, very strong Adventist. He and his brother, you know, my sister-in-law passed away. The father passed away. In fact, he was in wheelchair. They brought him there. And from there, they carried him and took him to the Bosch tank. We didn't have a baptism tank there. You know, it is in a place where uh, uh, it is an, it, the, the building belongs to big, it's a big arena. It belongs to atheist. So, but we rented that. Then uh, outside, uh, uh, there's a big stat statue of his. Under that, it says, there's no God. Whoever believes in God is a fool, you know, something all written there. But there is a general manager of that, uh, uh, he was caretaker, he lives there. The end of our meetings, he was baptized. In there, many people, few people from that compound were baptized right after that. So anyway, we sent that boy to boarding school. Now he, he and his brother are very, very, very strong Adventist kids. They're here in Washington, I mean, in New York. One is attending the health uh, school in Virginia. And uh, it's a uh, God's providence. And uh, we were able to bring our families into the God's fold. So hopefully their children, their children would teach, touch the, then when we are here, one day we were, I was watching a TV, Indian channel. That is where I found one of the, uh, a movie actress from here, he was talking to the Indian actress. And I said, what in the world is he talking about? He was talking about uh, the, the, the AIDS, 
how we can help. And in fact, he was going telling them how they can help awareness and help them uh, uh, AIDS. I said, what AIDS? AIDS is in Africa. Why India? We left in 72. We didn't have the virus at the time. Found out it is the second highest in, in first Africa, second India. And it's also that to South India where we came from. And uh, we said, I told her, all night I couldn't sleep. Next morning I told her, we got to go to India. Because nurses, let's go help some people. He said, what are we going to do? Let's go village to village to village, teach people how to take care of themselves. He says, you go, I'll stay here. So I went there and I got all the uh, videos and uh, uh, cameras and everything. I went there. And uh, I went to village to village teaching people then training nurses, because they don't know. Then training pastors, because they're the ones who are going to go to the village to village. They know who's affected by who. And then uh, uh, public meetings. Then while we are there, we found out there are so many children who lost their families due to AIDS. Then my niece, she picked up, uh, she told me who are there, where they are, because it is taboo. You can't, the families don't tell. In the villages, they, if somebody has AIDS, they're, they're condemned. So it's all hush hush, you know. But uh, some people we know, we worked with public health people, they said, uh, oh, this lady, husband passed away, he had AIDS, you know, like that. They told us. So I went and talked to these children. And uh, then I told them, uh, uh, we want to, we want, we, then my, by then I came home and I talked to my wife, then I went second time. While I was going around, then I went and met these children in their homes. At least one parent is alive. Then I told the children, do you want to come to school? I still have the videos of that. You want to come to the school? We have a special school in, you know, uh, it's about 12 miles away, 13, 15 miles away. And it's a boarding school, you want to come? Then they said, okay. Then I talked to the parents and I said, I'll pay for it. Send them to school. So they came and checked out to see what kind of school, what it is. So 15 students were able to come. So we took them in. Then we started, a, we built a house for them. A nice house we built, three bedroom home. The problem is we are here, they are there. It's about a mile away from my, the, the hospital and the school, Adventist school. And who is going to take care of them? How about the food? When they give them the timely food meals, or will they, if they get cold, I mean cold and cough and fever, who is going to take care of them? So we didn't work out for us. Then the best thing is the, the hospital administrator and the school principal, uh, he's a good friend of mine, and he went to Andrews, and he was in my home at the time. Then I asked him, he was there when the opening of it, and I said, you know, I have an idea. I want to put all of them in a boarding school, in your school, Adventist school. Will you take them? I'll pay for it. He said, no problem. So we shifted all of them into the boarding school, and they were there for the last eight years. They were doing a wonderful job, and this, uh, the administrator of the hospital and school, the new one came. He was with me this weekend. You know, I told him somebody coming. So he was here, and in the, when he was here, I asked him about them. And I said, can you make sure the children go through the Bible classes? So someday they will be baptized and they'll be just like all of us. So we had a wonderful talk with him and I'm hoping the children will, uh, God's grace, they were going to school, they were taking Bible classes, but we want individual talk to them someday. These children will bring their families also and they touch them and bring them families also into the our uh, our message so this is basically what uh, what we are doing here